Uh, so I'm, I'm Steve Ranke. Uh, I like uh, being in Germany where they say Reinke. Uh, and uh, my uh, film is a 22-minute video essay, A Boy Needs a Friend, um, that is about kind of gay male intimacy and many other things, actually. My first question is actually, when did you start thinking about this project, A Boy Needs a Friend? And, um, or is it, I can also imagine that it's material that's you've been collected over years and now maybe put together into the film, but like the concept or the idea behind it, when did, how did that evolve? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm always making work mm -hmm. kind of in little chunks. Um, and so I think just the title came first. Um, and I liked the title and so began then to do kind of more chunks around friendship or intimacy. Or mm -hmm. And do you always work, would you call it, like I, I would call it an essay, like essayistic, for like how do you, how, how do you label it and what is it essentially about? Hmm. Ah. Do you want to label it? I mean, I don't know <laughs> if that's even necessary, but I, well, it's, it's I think it helps a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think of it as a video essay as well, mm -hmm. but it's also part of an ongoing series of video essays mm -hmm. um, called Final Thoughts. Um, and this is, um, the video is a segment of Final Thoughts series four. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, and the idea is the series will continue, series of uh, sort of first person video essays um, until the moment of my death. So there'll always be a, another thought to replace the one that just went before it mm -hmm. um, until there can't be any more. Mm -hmm. And it's so like in a way when I, I watched it I think two or three times and it's so complex because it tackles uh, issues of na nationality, sec sexuality, um, being being a white man I guess or being a, a being a man who has a double citizenship, um, who travels, who um, just I mean lives his life basically, but from very like uh, particular perspectives and how how do you position yourself in this world <laughs> this is a very broad question I know it's a very but broad question. it feels yeah. like you try or you attempt to to say something about this like position and your experience of living this life and there you have something to say about that mm -hmm. <laughs> well this is almost the first video I've ever done that is actually quite personal mm -hmm. I've always used for 25 years now my own voice and mm -hmm. first person in, in my work but it's rarely been actually about me and this mm. one really is mm. pretty specifically about me and also much more uh, personal there was kind of no way to tackle the the theme of friendship or intimacy without actually mm. um, uh, being more personal less fictional um, somewhat less ironic than um, all my work has been in the past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't actually answer your question, but it's sort it's of. A, yeah, <laughs> like, like do, but is, like, as an artist and as a creative person living in these times, is the question of position or, yeah, like, or perspective, is that important to you? And, and, and if yes, hmm. then how far? <laughs> <laughs> of course it's important. That's yeah. uh, kind of all there, there is. I mean, for me, uh, work is always, uh, artwork in general, uh, but mine too, always trying to sort of... Um, it sort of destroys and makes the world at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a way of constantly seeing uh, what's possible to think, feel, or do uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And that always has to take into account one's position, mm -hmm. a variety of positions. Mm -hmm. um, like the title of Boy Needs a Friend immediately calls, I don't know, gender to my mind or, um, and, and I'm, I'm wondering what, what does boyhood or boy mean to you and how do you think about your own boyhood yeah do you um, remember a lot or do you <laughs> <laughs> well no i mean i don't think about it that mm -hmm. often i probably mm -hmm. could remember stuff mm -hmm. um the i mean it's also um a very uh, kind of queer male video mm -hmm. i mean in real life most of my friends 60 70 percent of my friends are are women and there are there's not a trace of uh, women in the video at all Excellent. it's very much uh, about men so it's even more about uh, kind of gay intimacy rather than friendship yes. um, uh, and so the idea of boyness was kind of um, central uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. but a boy uh, usually grows into a man in a way and um, the stuff we see in terms of gay intimacy is very much 
as a grown man or like a, a, a gay mature man, male sexuality in a way like do you do you also talk about this evolution in this film or do, do you think about that did you think about that um, not in this one so much but certainly mm -hmm. to say boy instead of man is to come from a place that's a, a bit more uh, vulnerable or a bit more pathetic mm -hmm. and even the statement a boy needs a friend is mm -hmm. both a pathetic plea and just a fact mm -hmm. um, yeah man needs a friend doesn't quite work mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and how much does, well, you, you talk about the fact that you have two citizenships and then also a part plays in, in Paris. Like what role does like location play in Europe and America, hmm. history and, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not, uh, sure, but it must play, I mean, it's quite, um, Yeah, I mean, there are two things that happened biographically around the time I was making the video. Mm. Um, and they were things which I would have supposed wouldn't make any difference at all, but seemed to make some kind of difference, although it's hard to pinpoint. Mm. Um, one was getting married. There's a monologue about that mm. in the video. Uh, and the other one was getting uh, dual citizenship, getting American citizenship. I'm, I'm from uh, Canada, mm -hmm. which I would have thought made, would make no difference at all, but mm -hmm. there's sort of slight psychic shift in, uh, well, a more radical one in marriage, but a slight one in the citizenship as well. That can you elaborate on that? I what's can't the really. I mean, yeah. the way I elaborated in the video was to make uh, a joke mm -hmm. um, uh, about the citizenship one. Mm -hmm. um, the, oh. But do you remember, like, I get, did you have to go to some sort of, like, uh, office and like do an oath and like oh just, yeah yeah what, yeah how was that, <laughs> is that do you, I mean, is it a joke in the end for you or not a it, joke no but do, is, is the section about it in the like video to, yeah, is but, a joke but is it a, is a humor a way to deal with that maybe in a, in a more productive way than taking it too seriously i don't know right well i just thought it wouldn't make so much material difference yeah. i mean i get to votes and they can't kick me out of america so right. easily now yeah. or at all i'm a citizen <laughs> Probably um, not. Yeah, it's, right it's, yeah. so there's a, a different kind of stability yeah okay yeah and um <laughs> and then europe and pa like what does paris mean to you and europe i've watched a lot of films well two films two french films at the festival uh one takes place in paris and it's also a gay film and i don't know do you have a certain relationship as an american or canadian to europe and to Paris in particular and the... I, I just happen to be in Paris to be where, okay. where I shot that. I'm not in Paris very often. Mm. Um, I'm much more often in Berlin or the Netherlands or England. Mm -hmm. There are also uh, those places, Northern Europe, mm -hmm. show my work much more often than mm -hmm. any place else in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, it's partly a professional relationship. I, mm -hmm. I come here uh, uh, to show things and sometimes to make things. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, but life yeah. and things are quite different in mm. uh, Europe than they are. Yeah, um, they, are they are changing right now, also radically. Um, you said you want to continue the series until your death. Yeah. In a way, what? Why? What is it? What is it about? What fascinates you about continuing this project? And It's that there's never an idea that comes to an end or a conclusion. That mm. there are always more mm. ways to go. Mm. Um, and so one of them, is it, in the, it is in this video, I have a joke about Marshall McLuhan. I love sort of um, Marshall McLuhan, it's just a constant stream of ideas. Some of them make sense, some of them don't make sense, mm. but mm. some of them stick. Uh, so it's just sort of keeping, keeping working at it mm. without ever expecting there will be any particular conclusion mm -hmm. or any even particular belief. Mm. Uh, just completely contingent uh, churning up of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And do you already think about form? Like, do you want to continue in this like video essay, essayistic form or is it what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the structures of individual videos change, but mm -hmm. that's the basic form. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what role does voice play? I Vo think your voice is really, uh, yeah, has some, is very significant in that film. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's central. I, I've been using my voice in my work, well, for 25 years, mm -hmm. since the beginning. Um, yeah. Like in what way? <laughs> why, is it, why is it central? Um, 
Well, I started out as a writer, mm -hmm. um, and so say it's 1982 or 1984, mm -hmm. and Laurie uh, Lori Anderson's Oh Superman came on the mm -hmm. radio, and it suddenly occurred to me that writing could be extended mm -hmm. through voice, through performance, uh, and through use of images. Mm -hmm. um, but still the voice was central. It's the, the voice is also the fastest way to mm -hmm. uh, seduce an audience or mm -hmm. to get an audience's attention. So it's not uh, a monologue. Um, it's a series of monologues. Yeah. yeah. But who do you talk to? Who do you do you envision anyone when you write it, or is it just a performance for yourself and then? No, like there's always the audience is in mind, mm -hmm. but it's an amorphous idea. The audience. The, I have no specific kind of audience. So you don't want to you don't want to target like specific groups or. No, I like to do work that a different kind of people could look at. Of course, the audience is never that wide, mm -hmm. and and sort of get different responses from. So, uh, from the very beginning, I was conscious of of not in, oh in this video a little bit of using say uh, strongly sexual images um, mm -hmm. or gay porn. I wanted to use them in a way that, even though gay people would have a totally different relationship to them than certain other types of people, mm -hmm. that there would be something in the video that they could all have some kind of relationship to mm -hmm. the material. Mm -hmm. How do you edit? Do you edit yourself? Or? I do. Yeah. yeah, it's all about editing. Yes. How do you edit? Like, how do you do, like, do you edit for the writing, for your voice, or do you first just uh, use the, sort of like, comp bring the images together into, like, one coherent, like, film, and then you use, put your voice over it, or, like, in terms of, like, pacing, the... and, like, yeah, pacing is all audio, uh, mm -hmm. so a combination of a um, of voice and other uh, types of audio material mm -hmm. are the basis for how I edit or structure things. Okay, and how long does it take you? you do you just... Um, it can really vary, but I work all the time and I work fairly fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean that video is short, it took five months, mm -hmm. so maybe not that fast, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> And how, I guess you had some conversations with the audience here too after screenings, like what, what questions come up, like what, what does it trigger in people, what are they interested in? Oh, what did come up? Um, my mind is blank. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of the questions from the okay. audience. So did you talk for a long time did you I mean you, you had a conversation with them though the I did I did it was quite short I remember okay. both moderators asked the same question which I only had a lame answer to it's like okay. how do you know when a work is done okay and I was just like, is it well, a feeling you probably don't know it's just a feeling I like is it it's mostly a feeling yeah, yeah. Okay. well it's easy to know when something isn't done yeah there are parts that don't yeah, yeah you know that something's not working yeah or there are points where the energy lags or something isn't making sense yeah um, yeah, I guess when it stops not working, it's yeah, finished. It's finished. Right. I know you also teach. Uh, how do you teach and what's your relationship to that, that position? Talking about positions you have in society or as an artist. And one of it is also a teacher or like mentor maybe, I guess, as an art professor. What, what is, how do you see that role? Yeah, yeah. It's also the video where I come out as a teacher, yeah. which I've never mentioned in a work before. Um, how do I see my role? Um, I don't know. I think it's always interesting to um, uh, uh, help people make work mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and write. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible answer. Teaching, I don't know. <laughs> no, to help people, that, that's a good. I mean, that's I mean, that's the essential role. Yeah, yeah. But maybe you, I don't know. Do you have a specific? What are your experiences, or what are you like always? How do you do that? What's your like way of helping a student? Oh, well, I, I'm very much, um, uh, they can do what they want. Okay. And some of them find, find that frustrating. Students yeah. often want... <laughs> freedom, yeah. yeah freedom. They want you to tell them, they, if they're making work for you, I can be tremendously opaque. It's like, yeah. you can't make work for me, you yeah. have to make your own work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, um, there are a, a lot of uh, ex-students that I still collaborate with, or mm -hmm. a handful. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mm -hmm. also been um, a way to pluck collaborators. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and what are, what are your upcoming projects and what, what are you planning to do, except the series that is going to continue until you die, but what is... Well, that's about it, really. Um, I also do a lot of writing and, and kind of other things. Um, 
The next one in the series, Welcome to David Warnerovich Week, will uh, premiere in Berlin at a show opening March 12th at Isabella Bortolozzi. So both the video I showed here, Boy okay. Needs a Friend, yeah. and the new video I'm almost finished. Okay. Welcome to David Warnerovich Week, as well as some drawings and uh, needlepoints. What, what is that about? That it's it's well, it has as its slogan um, more rage, less disgust, and in it the narrator s says anyone can celebrate David Warnerovich Week anytime they want. He does it the second week in February, and it's a time to try and work against beauty and sadness to work up uh, rage. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, the narr I'm not able to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is he is he some sort of like um, I, I don't want to use the word idol, but like what what do you? Well, he's certainly a, a touchstone. He's an important figure. A figure, yeah. yeah. In your own evolution as an artist or creative person, or I, just as yeah, a queer person? Or? Actually, not especially for me. Only a little bit for me. I think culturally. Culturally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think he? introduced or like what did he shift or change well he introduced a kind of punk rage and sadness with very little uh, means it's sort of a, a, a raw simple work across a range of media so photography film performance writing um, so for me sort of a central figure in that uh, New York uh, gay punk queer activism scene Cool, and it's, this is going to open in Berlin. In, in Berlin. March, where and when again? Um, March 12th, Isabella Bortolozzi Gallery. Okay, and that is, do you know what part of the city that is in? Uh, Schoenberg. In Schoenberg, okay. Wow, thank you so much. Ah, thank okay. you. Okay.